Hi everybody, my name is Mike, and I love maps. This is about the 87th try for me making this video. I'm just going to embrace the logic and the inspirational words of Jake Parker, who created Inktober, and that's finished, not perfect. So this take is going to go end to end without any editing, at least until I get it into the computer. Anyway, as you can hear in the background, my four-legged companion Rose is chewing on his bone. If you're going to art, art with others that you love. So there's a guy I love, and he's chewing on his bone. Now, as I was saying before, I want to make a quick video about maps that I draw. Well, the first place to start is always with your work area. You want to have an area that's clean, and by clean, I mean free of obstructions and gunk. And, before I start, I always brush. Because the last thing you want is to have little bumps or dusts or crumbs of food. Because if you're like me, you like to eat at your desk. Now, this little brush I picked up on a whim from an art supply store called Michael's. Called Pacific Arc, it was a buck. You can use any brush you want. Now, you guys might be looking at this grid map I've got. It's pretty cool, isn't it? This mat is actually something you pick up at a fabric store. It's called an Olfa, or an O-L-F-A. They're about 50 bucks. You can get smaller ones if you're just starting out, or if you don't have a lot of space. But I highly recommend you get one as big as you can. Like I said, this one's 50 bucks. It is... 36 by 24. Next thing you're going to want is to have plenty of light. I have fairly good light, but I know others would say, oh, it's not nearly enough. Well, you know what? Do what is comfortable for you. I also encourage you to have inspiration, like my little dragon right here that needs to be painted. People often ask, what do you use to draw with? Well, truth is, a little lazy. I just use good old Bic disposable mechanical pencils. But I also like Dixon Ticonderoga number twos. Don't know if you guys can see that very well. Probably not because I don't have a good light. There we go. Like I said, finish not perfect. Now people have often asked, well, what kind of pens do you use? Well, there's an artist, another fantasy cartographer that I really like, named Dyson Logos. At least that's the name he goes by online. Anyway, he got me turned on to these. Microns. And they are excellent. I'm using three of them today. I'm going to be using the 05, the 02, and the 08. And each of these actually skills up as you go in number in size of tip. Once again, those are Sakura Pigma Microns. I'll just put those to the side. Now, a lot of you guys are going to be using pencil to start out with, and there's no shame in that. I certainly started out with pencil, and when it comes to detail, I prefer to use pencil first, because you can always erase pencil. And then you're going to ask, well, what happens if I don't have a good eraser on the end of my pencil? Ticonderoga pencils have really good erasers at the end of them. Bix aren't bad either for a cheap pencil. But if you're going to get serious about erasing and taking care of mistakes, you want to use a Staedtler Mars Plastic. I like getting it in the pen form, which you can adjust whenever you run out of eraser. So an entire pen of just eraser. Isn't that awesome? Of course they also make them in the bricks. They're all Mars plastic. And the reason I like Mars plastic is it does not smear. You may, as you're erasing, see a smear appear. No, no pun intended. But it will quickly erase it. More to the point, if you're somebody who thinks they're going to be erasing a lot, like I did when I started. You're going to want to draw on something that has weight to the paper. And you probably can't tell it on here, but this is cardstock. I like using cardstock particularly for two reasons. One, it's thicker, 
It takes eraser damage really well, and also it absorbs ink. All these pens that I mentioned before, they are India ink. Once again, Sakura Pigma Microns. That ink will latch onto the paper stronger and last longer and resist fading. I'm going to adjust the light here so perhaps we can see a little better. Now, a piece of paper that's blank like this can be very intimidating. So I'm going to use a technique that my old art teacher from sixth grade, one of my first inspirations, Mr. Dennis Sherrill, told me. He was like, create a space. And I've done that here with pencils. Create little boundaries. Now these are just for exercises. When drawing an actual map, you'd want to create a bigger, larger um, area. But you always want to define where you're going to start drawing on the paper. It gives you limitations. It tells you where you're going to start and where you're going to end. As opposed to just feeling this vast nothingness that exists on this paper. I used an architectural stencil to give me my perfect little circles, and then I just used a straight edge of this protractor right here to just make these little boxes. Nothing fancy. There's no rhyme or reason to any of this. I mean, you could randomly put them on the paper. The idea is that create small spaces first. Each one of these little circles is going to be a world that we're going to play in. And the first one we're going to play in is just literally going to be how to make mountains. I've made some examples right here. In the infinite words of oh, one of my other heroes, Mr. Bob Ross, there are no accidents. Well, there are no mistakes. Only happy accidents, just like that one. <laughs> like we said, thank you, Jake Parker. Finish not perfect. And as you can see, I've stayed within the lines here around my little circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the techniques that I use to make these kinds of mountains. You can use your pencil or you can use your pen. But I'm going to be doing pen today because the techniques are pretty much the same. And if you learn by doing pen in the first place, it helps it make it easier. Like I said again, Bob Ross, there are no accidents. Shit, I did it again. There are no mistakes, only happy accidents. Well, I'm nearly eight minutes into this video. And I'm not going back now. <laughs> Here we go. All right. So I've got my circle. At this point, I would expect you to take your piece of paper and draw a circle. You don't need an architectural uh, thing. You don't need a, a little fancy circle maker like this. You just need to draw a circle or a square, whatever. Create some limitations for yourself. I like to start with a broader point pen because it's more defined. This is I'm going to use the Micron number 5. And the first thing you want to do is just go ahead and create a triangle. Doesn't have to be fancy at all. This is a mountain. This is a mountain in every fantasy environment I've ever seen. A lot of people think that this works out. But there's something unsatisfying about these mountains. They're just here, out in the middle of the paper. Well, the truth is, is that mountains themselves aren't just little points that stick out of nowhere. They're actually usually formed by plate tectonics. And there is a roll or a line that they follow, as though it was a wrinkle or a curve in the earth. But we like to think of them as points. So when you're making your mountains, put them together. Have them touching. Because they are. They're a wrinkle, they're a roll, they're a wall. Next thing you want to do is take this pen and put it down. And get yourself your next pen. Which is going to be the number eight. Number eight is the broadest point that I have for my microns. And what I like to do with these is I like to define the shadow of my mountains. 
the sun rises and the sun sets in every world that we know about. So creating a shadow area helps define where that sun rises and sun sets. Now it's absolutely irrelevant about where it rises and sets. The idea is you want to split each one of these little mountains. Now you've created little three-dimensional shapes. Now you have somewhere to go with. And you say, well, why did you use the number eight instead of the number five again? Well, you could have used the five. The idea is that you're going to fill in these spots, create a shadow. Stick to one side. I prefer to have my shadows usually on the right hand side of the paper, the one closest to the hand I'm drawing with, because I do draw right handed. You don't have to be perfect. Once again, mountains are organic. And if you make a mistake, okay, no big deal. You just fill it in as though you meant to, and then that mountain has a little jag. And then we thicken this side over here, so it's not so, so ultra pointy. Perhaps the shadow goes over that mountain. And you just continue on. And as you saw before, I created defined limits down here. I cut the triangle off. I let it be known that there is a floor to wherever we're at. I just don't keep going. In fact, if anything, I'm going to extend these out a little bit. Because mountains are casting a shadow. And you can do a lot of inferred detail by just changing the silhouette slightly. And by that I mean making the shape more organic and carrying it out. All right, so already these mountains look 100% better because there's a shadow, there's depth. By putting that shadow, we've created a sense of 3D. All right. Now, while I've still got my 8 out, it doesn't really matter. You could do this all with one pen. It just makes it easier to have, you know, multiple styles of pen. Mountains also don't exist in a vacuum. They have hills around them. Foothills, smaller peaks below them. It makes the mountain range more dynamic and kind of creates a texture and give some personality. And you say, well, why is that important? Well, <laughs> look at it. Already, it looks like you've got real mountains sticking out there. And what's funny is that these are just all symbols. No map is an accurate representation of the real world. By definition, it can't be. The closer you try to get to actually making it an accurate representation, the more you're drawing a facsimile or a photographic representation. And even then, that's not necessarily useful. The whole point of a map is to give you orientation and to offer symbols that provide understanding. So these are mountains, and you understand they're mountains because we've been conditioned to know that that's a mountain. It's pointy. Now, I brought out my number two, which is my favorite, usually the one I wear the point down on the fastest with these pens. I'm going to add some texture. So mountains, you want to stand out on the page. And so I'm going to just make little lines at a diagonal. One next to the other. There is no right or wrong. You can make hash marks. You can even do dots. But the idea is you want to give these mountains a little bit of texture. Coloring them in, so to speak. Well, as you'll notice, I try to bring it all the way to a line. I try to leave a little white spot at the top. Gives the indication of perhaps that these are snow peaks. If I could hold the camera on target.
finish not perfect. As you can see, my little mountain has some jaggedy texture here as I'm dragging the pen over it. I'm going a little bit quicker. This one only has a little snow peak. There we go. Alright, and there you have some very nice mountains. And the very last thing I like to do is I like to trail them out a little bit. You know, use the two, use the five, but offer the last layer of texture. Let the person who's reading this map know that there's something else going on here just besides the mountains. Either it opens into a plain or a valley. Perhaps there's a couple trees sitting out here for to indicate some kind of grove. And there you have it. It's finished. It's not perfect. But it's definitely mountains. I've taken approximately 16 minutes to talk all about making mountains. And I hope you've enjoyed my ramble. Like I said, I'm going to make more videos here in the future. If you'd like to see more of my artwork, you can check out my Etsy store, or you can go to Uncharted Territory at Facebook. Really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video, and look forward to making another one soon. Thank you.